Hey everybody, and today I'm going to show you guys how to build a complete self-cut system. None of this $20 and you'll be able to build a full self-cut system. Now this is going to show you everything that you need to buy in order to make a self-cut system that will hang on a wall and it'll also have the LEDs across the top. And I will not be using a power drill. I'm just going to be using a small Phillips screwdriver. So basically anyone, as long as they have a screwdriver, and build the right or buy the right parts, you'll be able to make this system. Before we get started, I need to make a shout out to two people. First, uh, Z Green TV. He was one of the first people I went to on YouTube to look up how to make this system after figuring out that the self cut system is a complete fucking ripoff. And the second one is to the Eric G. He made a uh, a condensed video of basically what Z Green TV made, uh, but he just shows how to make the self cut system that folds. And he does use better hinges that work better than Z Green TV. So, with that said, let's get started. Alright, so you can see I'm just building this system completely in my room. So we're going to start out with the things you're going to need to buy from Walmart and the first thing you're going to have to get is the three mirrors and uh, those you'll be able to find in the mirror section along with this and this is the mirror hardware set $3.33 it's just going to go over the door that you'll be cutting your hair next to and then to follow with that is just a simple extension cord six foot extension cord that's super cheap. I got the receipt right here. Everything totaled out to $24.13. So that's everything you're gonna need to get from Walmart. Next, moving over to Home Depot, uh, you are going to need two sets of hinges. The first one is the narrow utility hinges. And I got the one and a half inch size. Next one is T hinges, and I got the two inch size for that. This next piece, it's an optional piece. Uh, when you screw in those screws to the mirror, they're gonna poke through the back and they'll be pretty sharp. So if you want, you can add some felt pads to it. This is the most expensive piece out of all these. And then the last piece that you're gonna need to get the, uh, the mirror set to hang on to, you're gonna need two screw hooks. And adding up everything from here, from Home Depot, uh, if you minus all the felt pads, it comes around seven bucks. But right here is ten thirty-seven. The last thing you're gonna need to buy for this system, I bought on Amazon, and that's your LED strips. Uh, I made the mistake and bought the waterproof version. Uh, you don't need to get the waterproof version, although they will work. But you'll notice there'll be a slight issue because they'll be a lot thicker than the regular LEDs. But when you buy this system at first, it comes for enough to make like three mirror sets. I've already made two others, but the first one that you make will come with a dimmable AC to DC adapter. So you won't need to buy that for the first one. And I'll tag a link or I'll show you a picture right here up on the screen of a one that you could buy on Amazon. But if you end up making multiple, you'll have to get uh, an AC to DC adapter right here. and. I'll show you one that you can buy on the internet for this project. So that wraps up all the supplies. I lied. So there's actually one more component that you're going to need, and that is the LED mounting brackets. These are the ones that I got. They're a pack of 100 that you can buy on Amazon. Um, if you're only building one set, you can go with a cheaper option with this supplier, but I think you only get 12 of them. Uh, next, if you are building a second system, you're going to have to buy an AC to DC adapter. Um, I got the two pack for a bit cheaper on Amazon when they were selling them at a cheaper price, but you can also buy them on eBay at this price right here. Um, next I'm going to explain all the cost in a Google Doc that I made. Okay, so here's a Google Sheets document that breaks down all of the supplies and costs associated with this project. You'll see down here the color code all this represents is if it's highlighted in blue, it comes from Walmart, Orange, Home Depot, etc, etc. This optional part right here, 
All that means is that it's an optional component for your design. If you don't want to buy it, you don't have to, but I used it in mine. Um, and these links right here are to all of the items that can be bought online. So you just click the link and it'll take you to where you need to go. Um, the total cost of my design came to $51.38. Uh, this is actually cheaper because by my third design, like I did not need to buy the mounting brackets because that came with a hundred of them and that was associated with the cost of my first design. Um, so take that into account. Uh, if you use the cheaper alternative options, uh, the total comes to $48.92. And these costs are based off of July 1st, 2019. I'll also post the link to this Google Sheets document in the description so you can find it there. Alright, so starting out, I'm going to be using the narrow utility hinges. And what I'm going to be doing, I'm just lining them up. I'm going to set this hinge down and you'll be able to see, you're just going to line them up. and. Uh, you're gonna take this screwdriver, uh, and since we're not using a power drill, we can't really uh, drill pilot holes. So all I'm doing with this, because the mirrors are sort of slippery with the screws, I'm gonna take this screwdriver and make a little hole like that. And by doing that, you'll see I'll leave a mark, and that's gonna be able to get the screw uh, stuck in there so we can screw it down. Now I wanna take one moment to go over this hinge with you. The one mistake you do not want to do is set it upside down when you drill it. Because if you set it upside down, uh, then you'll notice, well, this would be upside down. If you set it upside down, it's not going to be able to fold in on itself. It will stop right here. So make sure when you set it down the correct way, it will be able to fold in on itself like that. That's all you need to know. You'll notice as I'm screwing in the first screw, I start in the bottom right hand corner and then for the second screw, I go diagonally to the top left hand corner. And what that does, it helps hold the bracket uh, in place so the mirrors stay parallel. All right, so we have our first set of hinges screwed on the mirrors. Should be able to fold up to 180 degrees just like that and Hold right in. So now that we have these on, we can start on the T hinges. Let's get started with that. For the first half of the T hinges, all you need to do is line up the brackets, drill your pilot holes, and throw on the screws. One thing I forgot to mention is with these T hinges, we're gonna be bending this side. And to bend it, you're gonna to have to be able to hold it down with something. So for me, I'm using um, an adjustable wrench and some pliers. Okay, so now that we have both type of hinges on, what we're wanna, gonna to wanna to do is to get this last mirror on top. And to do that, you simply fold this mirror on top of um, itself. And then we're gonna wanna take the last mirror and set it upside down of the two, on top of the two other mirrors. Next, uh, we're gonna wanna drill these two top holes into this mirror. Um, and to do that, we're gonna have to bend right here. We're gonna grab a Sharpie, draw a marker right where we need to bend it. And once we do bend it, this uh, flat part or it'll be flush up against this mirror and we'll be able to throw a screw into this mirror and the mirror will basically be complete. So let's do that. So you'll see 
this T-hinge is not flush up against the mirror. So what the Eric G said to do is hammer it until it's flush. That is not what you want to do. You want to unbend it and then rebend it until it's flush. This one actually turned out how it's supposed to be. It's right up against the, uh, the mirror and we can send a screw right through there to be drilled in. Okay, so at this point, we basically have a three-piece foldable mirror. That's all it is. But at this point, if you want to, uh, if you bought the felt pads, uh, you can see on the back here, we have screws poking through. You could add the felt pads if you want to. I'm not gonna do that right now for the sake of time, but you just tap them on and it's not that difficult. So, the next step I'm gonna show you guys is adding the LEDs. And the LEDs is pretty simple. They come in a big uh, windy bundle like this and there's an adhesive on the back. And you just peel it off and you set it on top of there. So that's what I'm going to do right now. One thing I forgot to mention is that these LEDs need to be cut once you determine the correct length you need for your mirrors. Now you'll see in the red circle there's two copper pads. These copper pads are along the whole LED strip and in between them is a scissor symbol. Anywhere you see those two copper pads in the scissor symbol you can cut them and they'll operate um, as normal. <clears throat> I'm just going to grab the LEDs and start off on this side and simply roll the strand out until you get to the end. And then once you get to the end, you find the length that you need. Uh, find that spot I told you about to cut and get your scissors and cut it right there. All right, so remember these are the waterproof <coughs> LEDs and you do not, I don't think you should get the waterproof ones because it makes it more difficult. They're thicker. You can see like that gel and the reflection. That's the, the light hitting that gel part. So I'll show you, you want to cut this copper part right here. And after you do that, quick slice, ah oh, shit. So once we've cut the LEDs, we're left with two copper pads on the end, they're the orange parts. And we're gonna wanna put two metal wires on top of those copper pads. But the problem with these waterproof LEDs is, remember we have this gel here. And to connect those two copper wires, all we gotta do is take off that gel. So that's what I'm gonna do here right now. I'm just gonna try and peel this back and take off the gel. Peel that off just like that. I'll take my scissors and I'm gonna cut. Just like that, cut the gel off. And now we have exposed those two copper metal pads so we can make an electrical connection. So to get these LEDs to light up, uh, we need to connect them to power. And that's where this AC to DC converter plugin comes in. And when you buy this, it will also come with this adapter right here. And this just goes right in there to get power. And then this little case is where we're gonna connect the wires. So give me one second, let me open it up. All right, so I have this case open up and if you can see right here, there's the two wires that are connecting through. Uh, there's a red and a black one. And you can see the red's on the bottom side and the black is on the top. And that's denoted uh, by Let's see if I can get that reflection. You can barely see it. There's a minus sign, if you can see that reflection right there. There's a minus circle and a plus circle. And that is gonna be connected to the minus side and the plus side of the LED. Now I was a retard and I cut the wrong side. So what I was showing you in the last video, actually I was cutting on the other side of the LED, which was the wrong side. So. I'm gonna do that same process right here. All right, so I got this side of the LED cut. 
So now what I'm gonna need to do is match the red side with the plus on the LED and the black side with the minus. So if you can see right now they're mismatched, but if I flip this over, I now have this red on the left and the black on the right. And from here, I'm gonna actually connect this into the power and put the power strip into uh, the wall. And we're gonna see these LEDs light up. All right, so I got the power plug in the wall. I'm gonna connect this into the wire connector. And now before I mess with this, I'm gonna peel off the back of the adhesive because we're not gonna need that in there. Peel off a little bit of the adhesive, about an inch. And next we're gonna wanna contact this copper section of the LED to the wires. And you'll see once you contact them, the LEDs light up. Okay, so once you have the proper contact, you're gonna wanna make sure that stays in place and close this connection. And it should have a little snap to it. All right, well, some of them do, some of them don't. And then once you know you have that good connection, uh, you won't have to mess with it any longer and you have your LEDs fully connected. Now that we know the LED connection is solid, we can disconnect it from the power and then we can place the, this box right on the corner of the mirror and we can start unraveling the LED or the adhesive tape from the back of the LED. And then we're gonna wanna place this directly on top of the mirror and we're gonna wanna slide that all the way down the mirror set. Now once you get done with one side of the mirror, you're gonna notice if you, if I were to just string out this whole LED and attach it to the top, when you start to open and close the mirror, the LEDs, uh, there'll be too much tension on some sides and it could fuck it up. So what you wanna do is you wanna leave a little extra LED right at each end of the crease or at each um, hinge. So you can unravel some adhesive tape and then maybe leave a little bump right here and then continue on down the line. And to leave that extra space, that's just so when you fully extend it or you bend it, the LEDs won't get um, too stretched out. Make sure you have a sizable bump right here on this hinge because this is the one that folds over. Now what we're gonna wanna do is fold this in just to see how it feels. Ooh, what was that? All right, so I found a mistake I made with my design. Um, when I fold this mirror in, I have this connector hanging on the inside. So a easy fix to that would be to have this connector right here on the end so therefore it's never gonna fold in on itself all right so i actually didn't disconnect anything what i did was this connector it was on that side and i was like well i just need to put it over there so i took this whole strap off took it off turned it around and then i resealed it and as you can see if i plug this bad boy in we are lighting up. So, we're Gucci. All right, we're gonna redo that fold test. And actually I already did it before I turned on the camera and it turns out you don't need huge gaps right here. You just need to have a little bit extra and you'll see it folds over quite nice. And then right here, boom, seamless. Everything's good. So that's what you want. You want a nice, easy fold not too much space. But as you can sort of see, right here, the adhesive is not that great. So that's why, well, give me one second, I'll go grab them. 
So that's why we have these mounting clips. And the next step is we're gonna take all these mounting clips and we're probably gonna put like three or four on each mirror so the LED strip stays in place. So how these mounting clips work is we got a hole in the bottom and we're just gonna set it on top of the LED, take our screwdriver, make a little pilot hole in there and then send a screw on through the hole. And we can add about three to four to each mirror depending on how secure you want it. And that's what we're gonna do next. mounting brackets on is definitely the most tedious part but what I found is if you uh, dig down with your screw and make a pretty deep pilot hole then the screws will go in a lot easier so with that said I got all of the mounting brackets in and we essentially have a self-cut system so we essentially have a full self-cut system it folds in on itself it lights up and the last step we need to do is add the screw hooks in the top so we can hang it on a door. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We got the mirror hardware set and the screw hooks. So I'm gonna open this up real quick. See what we got inside. And that, this is all you get, just this. Rip off this plastic. Alright, so we're gonna take these door hangers and we're gonna set them about equidistance, keep them nice and balanced across this middle mirror. And wherever these guys are gonna be, we're gonna send these screw hooks directly down into the top part of the mirror. And to get them in the top part of the mirror, I'm gonna take uh, my screwdriver, make some pilot holes wherever they're going to be, and then we're gonna manually screw them in by hand. All right, so quick tip. Like I said before, we're gonna take this screw hook and we're gonna set them equidistance at the edges. One right there, one right over there. And you can see on this mirror, there's a little divot right at the top. So we're gonna wanna put this screw hook right in the middle of that divot. And also the most important part, when you're sending in this screw hook, it cannot be crooked in any way. It needs to be straight up and down, perpendicular to the top of the mirror. If this screw hook is crooked, it will mess up the whole hanging part of the self-cut system. So make sure that shit is straight up and down, perpendicular. So the first step, I'm gonna make some pilot holes with my screwdriver. I'll do one at a time. So once that hole's in there, Take the screw hook and make sure it is straight. Once it's in, you'll be able to feel it'll be sturdy. And then at this point, you just want to make sure there's no bend. All right, first one's a little bit crooked, but it will work. And now we're gonna throw in the second one. Another quick tip, you want them to be uh, screwed in at equal amounts so it's not crooked when you're cutting your hair. So you can sort of tell by the threads on the end of the screw hooks, once that has sunk into the mirror all the way, that's usually where I stop and they'll be ready to go. All right, so now we're at the moment we've all been waiting for. We got our mirror hanging system. And there's two sizes. Uh, I usually use this one because I'm a little bit taller. If you're shorter, you can use this one. Uh, if you're not tall enough either way, you might just have to buy a different type of hanging system. But this was the cheapest one at Walmart. So what I do is I fold it over this way. Oops. And I sort of just let it hang there. Fold it over this way let it hang and it's a little bit awkward to pick up that's the only thing 
Um, but I just pick it up like this and I head over to a door. Make sure the door is cracked before you grab the system. Just set it right on top of the door like that. Shut the door. And there you have it. A full self-cut system that folds, hangs on the door, and hold on, icing on top of the cake. We about to light it up. Alright, let's plug her in. This is what we want. So when you purchase your LED strip, most likely it's gonna come with a dimmable uh, LED switch and you'll be able to adjust the brightness however you want. Uh, but if you end up making extra, you're probably gonna have to pay more for that uh, dimmable LED that's separate. Um, also, this cord sort of hanging right here, you can easily just set up a chair or something. I have a little desk thing here that this sits on so it's not hanging and putting stress on this corner part right here but other than that other than that I have one more thing to show you and that is the first self-cut system that I ever built and it actually has bigger mirrors than these ones because when I first went to Walmart to get the mirrors they didn't have these ones they had bigger ones so I just spent a little bit of extra money but the reason I want to show you it is because it has a different mounting system than the one this has and it's one for a permanent place that you'll be cutting your hair so like somewhere in your room if you're always going to cut your hair in your room put that mounting system on there and it's a lot easier than uh, putting up these uh, the mounting brackets so I'll show you that all right, so this is my first self-cut system that I ever made. You can see right here, this one has the dimmable switch. Uh, you can make it less bright, more bright. And it's probably twice the size as this little guy right here. Um, so I have a lot more space. I like to use this one all the time. It's my permanent one. This one I would take like somewhere on a trip or if I need to cut my hair and I didn't have time, I can just fold this one up, throw it in my car. Uh, but the way I mounted this one was I used, I think they're called eye hooks. And the reason I got the eye hooks was because I always cut my hair right by this door. So what I did was I built some, uh, I think they're like called screw sockets or something. They come with the screws and the sockets just, you drill them straight into your door or wall and they're really sturdy, they won't move. And then I just put this guy, hang it right up there and I'm good to go. The extension cord is an optional purchase, but most of the times if you're right next to a door, the only time you won't have to buy the extension cord is if there's like an outlet right here or right here on the other side. So might as well pick up one of these guys at Walmart for a couple of bucks. All right, so that concludes the tutorial. We have fully assembled our own self-cut system. No longer need to spend that $200 uh, that you would be paying if you just bought it outright. And plus, this is a lot more durable. If something breaks, you can easily fix it and it's not that expensive. So, it's all good. Uh, I'm not gonna do any haircut tutorials because there are way too many of those on the internet already, really good ones that you can learn from. But one piece of advice I would give you is that I've been doing this for about a year and the one thing I've learned, it just takes practice. It takes a lot of practice and you need to follow a system. If you just go into it every single time, randomly not thinking about what you're doing, it's not going to come out right. So follow a system and just know it's going to take a lot of practice. All I really do is I just fade my sides. Uh, it grows out way too fast. That's the main reason I built my self cut systems because these sizes grow way too fast and a fade only lasts for about a week anyway. So uh, that's really what it's good for. That's where I get the value out of the self cut system. So that'll conclude this video. If this video helps you, please hit the like button. And if you have any questions, you can just drop a comment in the comment section. And as always, good luck building it 
and have fun learning how to cut your hair. I know it was exciting for me. I'm sure it will be exciting for you too. Peace.